here we go. First day on the salt in the kayak. Look at it, it's wonderful. Taking the uh, afternoon off work because it's all the break in the weather and it's just too good to pass up. The weather's going to be shocking again for another week or so, so super excited for this one because it's a new mark, never fished here before. We've got Navios Navionics on the go and uh, hopefully we'll get in amongst some fish. I've had a lot of success from the shore with uh, crustaceans and crows and things, so I've uh, I brought some of those with us. I've not tried them on the yak yet, so I'm uh, looking forward to see what they can do. Got about a mile to go to a reef that I've spotted. It's a huge tide. Around here the tide travels south when it comes in. It's a rising tide at the minute, or an incoming tide. So, I'm going to hug the coastline, stay out of the main tidal flow, and head out diagonally against, and kind of ferry glide against the tide. And then the idea is to just do a one monster drift. Oh, there's some divers down there. See the bubbles coming up there. So this is Beadnell Skier, and the tide's coming towards me. Don't know if you can see that area of uh, confused water in front, but that's the actual tidal current hitting the skier and bouncing out towards our boy over there. And uh, it's this current that I need to paddle against, then head out kind of yonder way. Well, I've got to the point now where I need to head out offshore, so I'm going at it like 45 degrees, and I probably won't make any headway, but I'll be using the current hitting this side of the boat to help push me out. And that way I don't lose any sort of distance going backwards, but then all the effort that I'm putting in will take me out to where I want to be. And then from that point I can start drifting. It's called ferry gliding and I'll come back in doing the same same thing by pointing the, with the current hitting the right side of the boat. You kind of do it in rivers, it's a, an efficient way of paddling. I I put some sun cream on. Get in. So this is a craw that I want to use. <clears throat> it's a Z-Man uh, three and a half inch craw, I think. But the ground that I'm over is really kelpy. And uh, what I want to use this on is just that kind of a rock face, basically just scoured rock, if there's such a thing around here. So I'm going to start off with a small uh, silver minnow. Sorry, silver minnow. Fish minnow. And fish is just above the kelp. Rod-wise, I've got me old faithful uh, Rovex Integra Gold Kayak Rod, which is uh, six foot and it's an eight to 14 pound class boat rod. Uh, I've used it for absolutely everything on the kayak. Brilliant, especially for 20 quid. And then I've got a two and a half thousand size Daiwa Mag Sealed. Uh, Daiwa BG mag sealed with uh, 12 pound braid on and 20 pound fluorocarbon. So let's get this down there and see what the crack is. Come on, first crop. That's uh, just snapped. Can you see anything down there, boys? Any bait fish yet? Well, <laughs> I don't believe it. My paddle's just snapped. Must be stronger than I thought. Shit. Don't, don't carry a spare. <laughs> Never assumed that my paddle was gonna snap. <laughs> oh. Well. I can still paddle with one paddle, just like in a canoe, but I don't think I want to be heading a mile and a bit offshore, really. Um, shit, what do I do? Let's 
use a J stroke like the good old days in the canoe. I hope the other bait doesn't snap else I'm screwed. Oh. oh I've only been out for half an hour. That is devastating. Well, it's gonna be an interesting evening. <laughs> Look for some ground around here. Definitely not paddling into the tide with this. What a J-stroke is, is in a Canadian canoe, like an open canoe. Um, obviously you've, you've just got one handle, one paddle blade, so what you do is at the end of your blade you put it in, you twist it slightly, and then the forward motion pushes you to the opposite side of whichever way you're paddling on. And the twisting motion like that brings you back round in a straight line, so you're kind of just doing that all the time. Let's not lose that. <laughs> well, I was just drifting around, thinking what I was going to do. Came over some reasonable ground and thought, oh, I'll have a, I'll have a drop. And 20 meters of water. Nice little codling to save the plank. <laughs> and the uh, little uh, fish, crazy eel. There we go. Good little healthy cut, Tommy. Let's get him back. Yeah, get in, we've got a fish. I'm just assessing the options here and uh, I'm drifting the right way. I'm actually, uh, before I was drifting out to sea, but there's, uh, there's a little bit of a breeze blowing, an onshore breeze. So it's, um, it's kind of pushing us back in towards the beach, which is good. Um, the only problem is that once the tide turns, which is in, in about an hour or so, half an hour, an hour, then, um, It'll be pushing us away from where I want to be, so what I might do is paddle that way and then when this uh, when the tide turns and this breeze is meant to carry on all day or all evening then uh, it might push us into where I need to be right into the shore, which will be good Oh, damn Yay and damn, what a roller coaster First kayak caught cod of the year and uh, <laughs> first kayak calamity of the year as well. <laughs> oh, I wasn't even fishing. I was changing the battery in my GoPro. I just had this over the side. That's how lethal those fish are. Fish crazy minnow, uh, crazy eels. Don't even have to fish them. Oh well, there it goes. Yes. <laughs> Let's get another. All joking aside about this scenario, I do have a radio with us. Um, I got a little bit of phone signal, but it's sporadic. But the radio is the important thing. So although I don't have a split, a secondary paddle, uh, I do have the means to get in touch with someone just in case you have a paddle breaks off. <laughs> oh, there's a puffin. Oh, my luck's in. It's 
smell fish on the air. It's a good sign. Feels like it could be a pollock this. Yep, another codlin. Open your gob. Look how mottled that is. On the drop. Uh, some really good looking ground here. I was just about to, uh, to paddle further up, but I think I'll uh, fish this for a little bit longer. So I've been drifting for about half an hour since that last fish, and I think what I'm going to do is uh, oh, I was just about to paddle back up and try and reset this drift, but this ground looks really good. Right, let's see what, what we can do with this one paddle. While I'm on slack water, I'm going to give the crawls another go. Less chance of us snagging up. Because I'm not drifting and I'm pretty much just fishing the same spot with that, uh, with that crazy eel. So let's get another one of these Z Man crows on the go. Had a 40 gram weight last time round, but I'm going to go for. Uh, 30 this time again because there's no tide running. There we go. Let's see what happens with this. Fish on, on the crawl. Yes, it works. <laughs> Wonder what it is. Probably another cod. Yep, another cod. Get in. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, 
that works. I love it when a new theory works. There we go. Don't know whether that's lice or a row on it, but uh, it's definitely not a spawner, so where you go, son. Yes! Get in! Felt the hit there as well, it was a real, real aggressive one. We absolutely smashed it, which is what the, the Pollock do as well when I've caught them using this, well, this style of method. I was just thinking this orange might be a little bit too bright, but let's cast it out again. Look at all those fish that have just swam past. Oh, yes! Saw that on the uh, the sonar there. Well, there's four or five chasing it up as well. <laughs> they love the crawl. Biggest of the evening, probably about two pounds. Lovely fish, that. There's more down there, let's get another one. That was a proper wallop as well. Yes! <laughs> God, there's tons of them. So you can fish this vertically as well. There we go. Whoa, sprightly. percent on the GoPro. That's enough time to get one more. I've had two fish in two minutes forty. God, it's carnage down there. Oh, third fish in under three minutes. Whoa, 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 easy tiger. There we go, I think this is probably the biggest so far. Let's see if we can get one more before the battery runs out. <laughs> Gonna have to push the record button in a second, I uh, just want this is easy editing this.
There we go. Hey. Oh, yes. Little in. Gonna have to push record now. I cannot risk losing this footage. <laughs> oh, what a gutter, because there's still loads of fish there. This is what I'm seeing on the sonar. There's just fish galore. Oh, there's even more. You keep an eye on my drift as well because uh, I don't want to lose track of where I am. So this is the very next cast after that cod before. Just before I had to change that battery. rare that this stick under your boat for so long. Oh, that's the bottom. Yes, got it out. It's rare that they stick under your boat for so long. Normally they just, you see that, that I've just shown you on the sonar and then they're gone in no time. It's now massive, but for the first trip of the season, and to make up for snapping me paddle. <laughs> Come on, fishies. You with these crows, because they stick upright, they take the posture of like a, I don't know, a shrimp or a, or a squat lobster defending itself. So you actually, in theory, don't need to fish them. They'll fish themselves just by sticking up in the air. Ah, uh, they seem to have moved off. Damn it. Let's try a little cast. Ooh. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Felt the peck first time round. Ah, oh, it's come off. Damn. And then I wound in and then another one hit it, or the same one again. Oh, the lifeboat's out there. <laughs> oh, I love it when a new theory or plan comes to fruition. Let's wait until the Pollock are back. They'll love this as well. So all I'm doing with this is I can, because I'm on a hard bottom and I can tell that because the, the sonar is yellow on the seabed. Yellow is hard and purple's uh depending on your settings anyway, purple's um soft. It's exactly what I do from the shore pretty much, just lift and draw. Because the bottom's hard I can feel the lead hitting, touching the rock with the thump. So one lift, two winds, so the, it's just kind of doing that, up and over, up and over, lift and draw, but I'm leaving like a, a pause after it's hit the deck, so then that gives the craw time to, to hit the upright posture. <laughs> There's a seal right behind us there. Oh! Oh, 
hopefully that's like a seal gone now. They tend not to come back after you uh, scare them away like that. Well, that seal never came back. But then the fish have gone as well. And the tide has started pushing now. So what's happening is I thought I would, <laughs> simplistically I would be moving north and south in the tide, but because of the shape of this bay, this is like a big hook that juts out into the sea with this skier that you can see in front of us. Big piece of rock there. And uh, what's happening is the, the tide that's moving north is whipping into the bay and shooting out this way and instead of me drifting north I'm actually drifting out to sea and I thought when I was paddling in I was making good time you know you can see bow waves and all that type of thing but in reality I was almost standing still so I think it would be wise of us to kind of finish off sooner rather than later before the tide starts to really uh, push in because although I'm close to shore here, maybe a few hundred metres, I'm still quite a way away from where I la uh, launched, and where my car is. And if I go there, then it's going to be a world of pain to, <laughs> if I land there, it's going to be a world of pain to, uh, to get my yak back to the car. Feels a little weird, feels like my lure's twisted or something. It's more resistance than, than there has been. Yeah, I got hit on the drop. Right, this is definitely the last cast. I'm drifting way too quickly for my liking. Let's make it a good one. Nah, I'm pushing my luck. I'm nearly past that point where the tide's ripping through. Can't be too greedy. I've only got one paddle, so I've only got half the speed. Probably using the same amount of energy. Probably can't see this because of the sunshine, but I can see the current whipping around this uh, Harbour entrance here, kicking up a little bit of a, a swell. So I'm gonna go straight forwards and around this, try and avoid the worst of it. Woo! I am knackered. It's been nearly 22 years since I've been in a canoe. I don't remember the efficient paddle stroke, although ideally I need a hand grip at the top there to make it a bit easier. Well, that was an eventful night, wasn't it? Thoroughly enjoyed myself though, despite only having one paddle. Um, great to get in amongst the cod on the first trip out. And using a new technique, which I know works. Maybe it's slack water. I've got to refine it a bit maybe for, um, for tidal currents, but could have just been that the fish stopped biting when the tide started running. So yeah, happy days. Hope you enjoyed the video and uh, take care everyone, tight lines and I'll see you on the next one.